Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And this video is going to be different from what I've been posting the past couple weeks. Um, for those of you who don't know, I've got a podcast entitled Power Gauntlet, where we talk about video games and film and professional wrestling, anything related to nerd culture. And a while back, I had the privilege of speaking with TGV from the Urban Gentry channel. And uh, I had a great conversation with him. We talked about everything from wristwatches to Star Trek to books. It was a really great conversation. So this video is going to be that podcast um, with a, probably some Civ 6 gameplay on top of that. If you like this type of content, leave a like and uh, comment on what your favorite part of the episode was. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode. You're listening to Power Gauntlet. Power Gauntlet. The podcast dedicated to nerd culture hosted by steve papa if you're looking for copious amounts of stupidity sprinkled with clever banter while discussing everything from video games to star wars well this is the show for you ladies and gentlemen welcome to power gauntlet I guess first thing we, we should do before we even get started in this podcast is do a wristwatch check. Oh, very nice. Very, oh, you've been watching. Huh? Nice. I, I nice, know. Nice. I told you. I'm a big fan of yours. Well, I'm, I'm very honored. Um, <laughs> well, why don't you go first? Because I'm, I'm very intrigued to hear what you, you're wearing. So I am wearing my, in honor of this whole nerd culture, everything podcast that we're about to be doing, I am wearing my Seiko Wired AGA M. 601 that is the metal gear solid watch oh very nice very nice very cool yeah i'm impressed that is ah oh, you you couldn't have picked a better watch for, for your channel <laughs> how long have you owned that i've had this probably for four years now i bought it maybe like a year after it came out on ebay and uh this guy was selling two of them and the copy of the game and i was like well i just want i just want the watch so I emailed them privately and I picked it up for maybe like 600 bucks. So, wow. yeah. So I was like, oh yeah, definitely need this. Is that the version? So I presume that's the version specially for, uh, because I reviewed the kind of spin-off version, but, but that's like the limited edition, the one from the game. Correct. Right? Yeah. Oh, that's very cool indeed. Uh, so yeah, four years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. No, this is probably one of my favorite watches. It, it gets the most, um, like head turns, like when I wear it, people are like, "Oh, what's that?" And uh, mm. it's a, the, a very good conversation starter. So. I bet it is. I bet it is. Very nice. Um, well, I'm I'm wearing. Um, I, you know what? I, sh I I I've completely failed. I've, I've <laughs> I should have worn my my Seiko Jujaro, the the aliens watch. Yes. Um, and. I'm I'm actually wearing my favorite watch, which is the Rolex Explorer. Uh, it's the it's a very simple. It's like the most simple um, Rolex watch, and it's j no date, no nothing. Very, you know, um, time only. Uh, it was the watch of Ian Fleming, the the writer of Bond, um, and in some ways, kind of the unofficial real bond watch some people actually think it is the real bond watch because he he never actually said submarine he never said any other brand never got specific with the but he wore the explorer so um yeah i just i don't know i i think i'm wearing it um just to cheer me up what? um you know it's my favorite watch i i, I love it but i really have failed i, I i'm quite embarrassed i should have i should have I worn the jujaro i mean you can't you, go wrong you, with the rolex you, know, you can't go wrong with the rolex that's true but you know what um the jujaro the seiko has tripled in value since i bought it oh nice um simply because of its connotation with the alien or aliens, I should say, movie when Sigourney Weaver uh, wore it. Um, I, do, do you know that? Do you know that uh, watch at all? So I have seen you wear it once before in one of your videos, and it, right. it's a pretty sci-fi looking watch. If anyone hasn't seen, it, I would definitely recommend googling it because it yeah. is pretty much like one of the most unique watches I've seen in a long time. Yeah, it's funky. It's it's very funky. It's um. It, it was designed by the Italian uh, car designer. Uh, God, I'm going to butcher this, and, and I, I speak Italian, but that's how difficult his name is. Uh, 
Giorgiotto Giugiaro, that's it. Um, so he actually did the, he designed the DeLorean from Back to the Future. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's all kind of interconnected and, and it's just, uh, yeah, that's why I'm so embarrassed. I should have watched it. I, sh- <laughs> I should have worn it. But anyway. Um, Let me ask you a question now that we brought up the Bond, whole Bond yeah. series. Is there a reason why he went to Omega now instead of if he if the writer had a Rolex and that was his? I would assume that Bond would be synonymous with the Rolex then. Yeah, um, it's because the uh, Rolex never officially endorsed the franchise, and and um, Ian Fleming, the the writer, he was very much uh, um, he dropped a lot of brand names in the books um, because he, he kind of lived that lifestyle, uh, a, a kind of, I, I don't want to say upper class British lifestyle, but it, it kind of was it, it, certain brands, certain uh, fragrances, certain suits, certain shirt makers, all this kind of stuff. So he's very, very specific about what Bond wore and what, you know, these kind of things. Um, but, but it was never official. And I think, um, because then, you know, at, at some point, Roger Moore switched to Seiko. Mm. And that was like, that was sponsored, you know, that was a, a, a commercial. It was, a, it was a, um, what's it called? A product placement. Right. So I think, I think after that kind of era ended, Omega just came in there. And I think actually it's a really good fit because, and I, I, I you know, for my audience that are listening I've said this before, but I think it's a really great fit because Omega ha- have produced a lot of watches for the British military in their history. I personally own, uh, what's called the Spitfire watch, which is a little, little, um, uh, pilot's watch from world war two that, that they made for the IRA. R, I was about to say IRA, <laughs> R A F. Royal uh, Air Force pilots, um, and and you know I, I'm not trying to over dramatize th- that partnership, but they contributed to the the the, the pilots uh, keeping time in the Battle of Britain and, and subsequent conflicts, and that was a very you know it's it's not a thing to be scoffed at. It's a, it's an achievement they contributed to 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 the war effort, so to speak. Um, so I think there's a kind of noble, there's a good connection there. And, and uh, you know, they, they supplied Seamasters for the SAS, the SBS, which are elite um, um, special fo- British special force, forces. So I, it's not a big leap that Bond would wear an Amiga, I th- you know? Yeah. Sorry, I'm, you see you see what I mean? I start talking about <laughs> what, watches. I just No, I, I love it. Sorry. That was, you know, that's where I first got started into watches. My first watch was like a, I don't know, an old Looney Tunes swatch thing. Um, nice. But I always loved my dad's wedding um, gift, which was an Omega DeVille. It's like a solid gold watch. Oh, yeah, yeah, and I, yeah. I'm just They're saying, lovely. Like, yeah. and I'm like, oh man, I really want to have that, but I don't mm. want to steal it from him. I was thinking about beating him <laughs> up and stealing it because I really want it. <laughs> but then I said, no, can't do it. So let's um so f- let me f- introduce you fully. You are um host of the YouTube channel The Urban Gentry. Right. That's so right, yes. Where I guess what was the original concept of that show? And then I guess where did all those ideas come from? Right. Um so I, we have to go back a little bit and uh I, I was working in the music industry and just about the kind of time it was collapsing basically and I had to diversify into other jobs um and I eventually started recording I I did everything you know I was I was going from gig to gig one minute I'm recording with a boom mic the next minute I'm uh mixing a commercial and eventually when I first got my big paycheck that wasn't in a recording studio that was just freelance by myself um I, I kind of blew the money on watches because I always kind of liked watches. And, uh, then I had a lot of downtime because if anybody's ever worked, if you've ever worked in, um, uh, anything to do with recording, whether it's video or, or audio, sometimes you get, you know, you, you, you go a few weeks without, um, a gig, a, a, a job. Mm-hmm. So I started just 
making kind of little videos. Actually, I, I, I reviewed films. I was reviewing books. I was reviewing clothes. I was just the, the whole point of it originally was it was like a kind of like, I, I hate to say this because I think it sounds a bit cheesy, but like a gentleman's just things I love, you mm. know, like gentleman's essentials, so to speak. So I had the EDC videos. You know, I talk about uh, a, a film is incredibly important to me and I'm sure um, that will come across by the end of this, but um, so is books for that matter. But I just was, I wanted to kind of share things I love and some of that was obviously watches and for some reason, well, I mean, back then, I mean, it, it sounds like a million years ago, but it, five years ago, YouTube was very, very different and there wasn't really that many YouTube watch channels that weren't, either just somebody holding a watch for for a seller and not saying anything it was just it was diff, totally different like now like it's exploded and you got the whole community on there and there's new channels coming up every day and it's just complete which is great mm -hmm. I, I, i'm really happy about that but back then there wasn't much there so when i did a watch review i noticed they started going viral they started really you know you you review a book and it gets a hundred views and then you review a, a watch and it gets 10,000, you know, it's like, well, maybe I should do more watches, you know? So it just kind of escalated from there and just kept growing and growing. And, and now I do it full time, which I never thought I would do. So it's kind of a bit crazy, but that's, that's how it is. You know? Yeah. You're living the dream. I like that a lot. <laughs> what was, what was like your, uh, your favorite watch to review? Like in terms of overall skits, cause I know like you, you put on a lot of skits at the beginning of your, um, right. videos. Right. Like what was your favorite one to record in general? Oh, that, oh, that's a great question. I've never thought about, um, the most, you know, the, the, the one I really, Last summer, I and, and this video didn't do very well, but I had such fun recording it. I borrowed um, an Amiga Railmaster, and I I, sh I I went over the top. I the, it was completely overproduced. I, I spent I put way too much in for, into this video. It's just and and I was kind of disheartened that that it didn't get you know it didn't get the views. But um, but you know you, you just got to keep going. But the point was is that. I shot, I went, uh, do you, do you know Philadelphia at all? I've only been there once. Right. Yeah. Okay. So there's, um, there's a, a very important prison or penitentiary, I, I should say, uh, that's been converted into a museum and they've kept it exactly how it was when it was operating. They've, they've, and it's insane. It's, it's just, it's like stepping back into the past mm -hmm. and uh you put the little audio tour and lo and behold it's steve buscemi from um <laughs> from uh yeah you know broadwalk yeah. empire big lebowski and all that stuff um and he's doing the narration and you're walking around listening to mr buscemi and it's just it's amazing and and i i shot half of the video there and then i went to a rooftop bar that overlooked the museum and we shot the rest of it there because my wife was helping me. Um, I mean, she, she puts up with my madness, but it's, <laughs> it, it was just really fun. I just had a great day and I, and, and I, and I, I was sitting at the bar and I, I was just talking about the watch and I just realized like, you know, I, this is great. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm having fun. So it was, it was, and it was a nice moment like to share it with my, my wife and, to go to these cool places and then just to talk about what you love. And, um, it was, it was a surreal moment, but, um, yeah. yeah so, so that's probably one of my most enjoyable videos. Yeah. Yeah. No, I understand how much work that goes into, cause I, I have a few YouTube videos out there that are, you know, stupid ones from when I was younger. And right. a lot of people don't understand how much work goes into actually filming and editing and mm. rendering and, you know, uploading and all that stuff, like oh, all yeah. that work. And then when no one watches it, you're like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that sucks. No, absolutely. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a lot of work, but, um, and I don't think people realize I do this like seven days a week. Uh, I, I've, I've been trying now to slow down and like to take Sundays off and just to be like a normal human being. But, mm -hmm. um, I, I can't really stop working. I just, cause also like, I'm, I feel kind of blessed and I put a lot of work into 
getting where I am. So I just want to, you know, I don't want to take a moment for granted. And there's so many watches, there's so much little time, I feel, you know, so um, yeah. not to be over, over, <laughs> overly dramatic, but it's, you know. It's the, no, I mean, you could definitely tell you put a lot of work into your videos. I mean, everything that you produce is like very well thought out, very well executed. Um, so it Thank definitely shows, much. it Thank definitely you. shows um, all that work that you're putting in. Another Thanks. question I had in regards to your character of Hugo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah. for those of you who don't know who Hugo is, he is right. a, uh, is he a Velociraptor Tyrannosaurus Rex. I think he's a Tyrannosaurus Yeah, he's a, he's a kind of dwarf, small <laughs> Tyrannosaurus Rex. He didn't really grow very much. I, I think he was the runt of the litter, and I, I think that's part of his complex so yeah. where where did that character come from is that like one of your friends or something <laughs> like where is that i'm getting in serious trouble but i <laughs> i have to get it i have to say it so um he's based on a, a family member that i'm not well actually who shares the same name um so and and they actually commented one time on a long time ago on a video and um it's just me doing an impression uh, you know hugo if you are listening um <laughs> <laughs> very very sorry but no he's a he's a wonderful gentleman and he the, the the caricature is not the personality is not him it's just the way he talks so um but he he actually actually i think i spoke to him one christmas and he said uh, oh i saw your videos and 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 um and yeah and uh, it was just that voice gets me it kind of happened i don't know and and because the first time I had this little model T-Rex, the first time I picked it up, um, just as a joke, I started talking and I did the voice. Mm -hmm. and it, I, this was years ago. And then it kind of became, somebody referred to it, oh, the T-Rex. And then I thought, oh, well, I just, it, the name came and it just, I don't know, it just spiraled. And, <laughs> and, and now he's, you know, breaking into my apartment, wreaking havoc and, you know, stealing, stealing my watches and drinking my, my booze. I was you know, so, <laughs> I yeah. just saw that video too, where he's just down, <laughs> down in wine. Yeah, oh yeah. my God. It's so funny. It gets me every single time. I love it. So Good. I told my wife about you. I go, listen, I have TGV coming on. She goes, oh, what does he do? I go, he does like a lot of watch stuff. And then she goes, right. oh, watches are nerdy. I can see how that works. And I go, right. watches are nerdy? And she's like, yeah, they got gears, mechanical stuff. It sounds like pretty yeah. nerdy stuff. And yeah. I was just like, I never even thought about it like that. I don't, yeah. Would you consider it nerdy to get to be um, into watches that much? I, I yeah, there isn't. Well, yeah, I think your wife wife is absolutely right. There definitely is an element of kind of I, the word. It, it does nerdism even exist, but we'll call uh, it, it now. Well, it does not. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it de it depends how far you take it. Like I have, I have quite a strange, not strange relationship, but I have a, like, I know some people that really, really, I would say are watch nerds. Like they will tell you when it was made, the reference number, what the material, blah, blah, you know, this came out in 1976 and it was the, the fifth iteration of blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and they'll just, you know, they'll tell you everything about the watch um, I don't have, my brain is not wired like that. Um, I can't, I barely remember right from left. So, you know, <laughs> I can't reference numbers. I still don't know half the reference numbers of watches I, I own. So, um, so yeah, yeah, I think there is an element of that. And, and, but, but within that there's kind of sub genres. There's, there's the guys who love the mechanics, who love the engineering. There's the guys who love the, the, the design. Then there's the status guys who wear them as kind of like power jewelry, you know, the the kind of the Patrick Batemans of this world. And and then there's, um, I don't know, the fashionistas. And then there's, you know, so it's it's kind of different different types of nerds, but it's all kind of nerdism, really. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. um, I knew, good question. Though, really. <laughs> I knew you were a nerd, and I'm going to use that term very loosely. But oh like, yeah, I'm, what, I'm a nerd and proud. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> when you were doing your war room video, because did you move to Philly or you just yeah, went there? Yeah, okay, I'm, yeah. So when I saw that video and, and then I saw what was in the background, that I was like, oh yes, it was like a Mario little Mario figurine. Yeah. You brought up Star Trek, and I was like, oh yeah, I need to have this guy on. So yeah. <laughs> that's when I reached out to you. So what, like, what got you into that whole? Because you're a, a 
diehard Trekkie, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm. I, I mean, look, I mean, I'm not going to say I don't know each episode off by heart. But if you and I don't know, I can't remember what Data's cat is called, like f- factual stuff like that. But I I absolutely love Star Trek. I mean, I love it. I love the, uh, TNG, DS9. I'm rewatching Voyager at the moment. I, it's it's you know what? I yeah, I, it's not my favorite, but DS I'm DS9 mostly. But um yeah, I, it just makes me profoundly happy. I love that world, and I, it make me, makes me nostalgic for for when I watched it as a kid. And I I think I was a bit, I think I was a bit um, didn't really appreciate it how clever it is. Yeah, I haven't gone back and and watched any of it. I I watched um, which one's the one with Picard? Is oh, uh, the next, next generation. generation. Yeah, so I watched that one um, a little bit growing up. You know the reruns mm-hmm. and all that stuff. And so I know a few of the characters, but I I wouldn't like I didn't fall in love with it like I did Star Wars, right? Right, 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 right. So yeah. I, what what was it about the show that really got you into it growing up? Um, well, I have to say I love I I love the original Star Wars uh, as well, the original, mm-hmm. you know, the original, the original trilogy. trilogy. Yeah, um, but I think what Star Trek had that Star Wars didn't is uh, there was and I'll probably get flack from the Star Wars fans, but there was a depth to it intellectually. I think the the uh, the next generation, especially um, the way they would, because it was every episode is a different situation, a different you know they're exploring a different world. Uh, they're they're uh, but there's always some kind of moral conundrum. There's always some kind of. Um, and it's and a lot of it is so relevant to the modern world, um, and I love I love the way, especially Picard. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned Picard because I think he, he uh, Cisco is a bit more kind of a little bit more um, how should I say aggressive, you know? Like DS Nine essentially is is a is a war. The overarching story is more about war, mm. um, whereas whereas the Next Generation was that that kind of if you look at the enterprise it's like a big luxury cruise ship going around and uh, you know solving problems but not necessarily just resorting to because most most like less intelligent science fiction it kind of schlocky stuff is just like oh you know good guys bad guys they have a massive fight and that's about it Mm -hmm. but but i think star trek there was so much more depth there was so much more social commentary there was um the the characters were so beautifully developed there was really intelligent writing uh, that um and i think even as a you as a as a a young kid i i i kind of picked up on it i wasn't experienced enough in terms of being exposed to the real world you know i wasn't a, when you when you're a grown up now now watching it back i was like oh my god this was some really clever stuff um and also compared to like i think with with the recent discovery coming out uh which is a bit more kind of big explosions and bright lights and all it's you know they're, they're appealing to a different generation you know mm-hmm. i'm not going to get into that argument but it's totally different vibe and it just made me want to go back and revisit. And then I realized, you know what? I, I took it for granted and it was such a good show. Um, and the rewatchability of it, which is really something I didn't, you know, I've, I've probably watched Deep Space Nine beginning to end, I think five or six times. And every single time I get to the last episode, I cry. <laughs> No, yeah. and it's just, it's just bizarre. Like, why am I crying? Like, I feel like I know these these people are part of my. Um, I think actually they 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 did a documentary called "What We Left Behind." I, I might have, might be wrong in the, the title, but it's a wonderful. You know, they they interviewed the whole cast of uh, Deep Space Nine, and they talked about why it was because it has kind of like, but there's been a resurgence of interest in it. Um, new newer. Uh, new trekkies i guess you could say are discovering it and and i think are realizing my god that was a really good show and it was way ahead of its time um and i 
I just think it's um, it's it's even even deep space so nine. The, the, despite it being very war based, there is a positivity, and and um, I think next generation more though. It's it's this kind of I don't know. Just I, it really appealed to me. Yeah, it really appealed to me. Sorry, I'm, oh. I'm waffling. <laughs> no worries. Uh, have you seen the new Picard show? Like, cause no, my, I haven't. Because okay, um, my buddies say my buddies are Trekkies and like. They don't like it at all. It's very flashy, very guns blazing, like complete opposite of what how you described Star Trek, you know. And so, right. I'm like, oh, maybe right. they are appealing to a, a different generation. So I'm like, ah, maybe I won't give it a shot. I don't know. I, yeah, I'm conflicted. I, the thing is, is I don't really have time, um, and I want to. I will watch it, and I want to watch it. Not uh, when when the hype has da- died down a little bit, and. You know, I'm a bit slow to, to, you know, you know, when we were emailing, I was telling you about games and stuff I play. Mm-hmm. I'm a bit slow. Like, like I, I, I'm still playing games from the nineties. Do you know what I mean? I'm just, yeah, no, I completely understand. You know, <laughs> times, so, times move way too fast now. We got to slow yeah. down, smell the roses. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. How, how, I mean, I'm, I, I, I'm have a channel about mechanical timepieces, you know, that, which is, you could say it's completely dated technology and it is, but, but, um, I guess it's, a, it's a whole thing of being in, in, uh, the romance of the past, of past traditions of past, uh, things that, that were important, um, that I think still are, you know, I, I, I think next generation, just like wristwatches, uh, and I'm not trying to be uh, corny, but they are timeless, mm-hmm. you know? See, now, um, now I'll have to give it a watch. I definitely have to sit down and watch it now, the next generation. Because the only mm. thing I've seen are the newer Star Trek films that I can actually recall. You know, right. I, I could think of those. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Which ones, which ones do you like? Like the, or... the ones with, uh, you know, Chris Pine or whatever his name is. Oh, you, oh those ones. Yeah, right. those okay. films. Yeah, I haven't seen any of the other stuff. Yeah, they weren't too bad. I, they had some kind of plot. They're a bit too... You see that? Uh, yeah, I, I'm not going to get negative about that. They they had redeeming qualities, um, but then it that you see that's what what I was saying earlier. They just resort to a big battle. Correct. Yeah, it's you definitely know, and, not. It's the same how they do um, like Batman films, um, mm. where you know Batman is this ninja, right? With his, that dresses right. up as a bat and can punch people in the face, but he's also yeah. the world's greatest detective. So. You never get to see that aspect of Batman. Oh, in the of film. course, yeah. yes, you're absolutely right. So, yeah. So that's what the newest film, The Batman, that's coming out with. Um, uh, at, oh, the British actor. Yeah, what's he I called? Um, I can't remember. Uh, Robert Pattinson. Yeah, I just watched him in um, The Lighthouse. Have you seen that? No, you know, I saw that, and I was just like, "This movie looks way too weird for me," and I just <laughs> skipped over it. I said, "No, there's no way I can do that one." Right, right, but right. that's precisely the weird stuff I like. You see. Okay, so now I have to give that a shot just so I can understand your your mindset of movies. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I have to do. Okay, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean that's one thing I I wish there was a detective film. So hopefully this one, um, Robert Pattinson is his name. That yes, yeah, right there you go, yeah, nice. But um, yeah, that's the type of movie I want. So I could see how that Star Trek versus the original can be. You know, there can be that divide on why people like this one and not that one. But I know when I was growing, I don't, how old are you? Um, I just had my birthday too. I should know this. Um, <laughs> uh, I think I'm 37. Okay. I was born in 83. So if anybody listening, okay, they yeah. can do the math. So yeah, I was, I'm, uh, 32. Yeah. Oh, 32. Uh, there we go. Perfect. So, uh, I remember growing up watching Stargate SG one. I don't know if you were into Stargate. I, I love the movie. I never got the series. Yeah. So but how was the series? The series, and, and this is my old brain thinking. Oh, when I was twelve, thirteen, fourteen, but it was yeah. just a bunch of. All I remember was a bunch of Egyptian style people with snake hoods and you know blasters yeah. <laughs> and going to different areas, but having the same kind of um, moral dilemmas, like when they visit a different world or whatever. So right, right, right. Yeah. Right. If, if Star Trek is like that, I'll definitely have to give it a shot. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I think I did I did catch a few of those episodes, um, I yeah, in, check it out. You know, give it the the first season is a little shaky, mm-hmm. um, but 
by the second and third in particular, like it really gets going because the problem is they had, you know, after such a hi- hiatus and, and following on from, you know, um, William Shatner and all of that, um, it's, it's a very different Star Trek even to that. So they had to kind of, they had to find their bearings, so to speak. And, um, but when it gets going, either you really really get into it and you'll and yeah you know, i i hope you do definitely give it a go so definitely next generation first and then deep space nine is that what yeah we're deep yeah oh, deep space that i mean i don't see how you're not gonna like deep space nine but i think to really appreciate it you should watch um tng first because actually i think the D- ds9 started about halfway through or somewhere um tng was still going when they started deep space nine is that the one um, with the is deep space nine the one with the uh the cyborg what's her name seven or what uh oh that's that's voyager oh okay never mind never mind yeah. i'm getting confused no no that's fine voyager is 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 problematic because it was <sighs> oh god don't don't get me started don't <laughs> <laughs> all right we'll skip over that one we don't need yeah, to have yeah, you yeah. uh Get all aggravated with me now because I'm bringing it up. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah no, I'm yeah. so far behind when it comes to watching sci-fi films and and uh, TV shows. Uh, like we, my wife and I just watched the the, uh, the the thing. John Carpenter's the thing. Oh my god! And I yeah. just saw, it and I was like, "Wow, this is actually a very good film." <laughs> like I was oh, surprised yeah. on how because usually films from the '80s, I'm like, eh. Whatever, you know, like they're cheesy, oh, corny. Amazing. But this one's really good. I was surprised how uh, few people liked it actually when it was in theaters. Because I was looking at yeah. like the reviews and stuff. I was like, really? It bombed? This movie is great. It's better than mm. what we, the, a lot of the stuff we have now. Yeah. Oh, oh, definitely. I, the, the, that film, this, it's so multi layered. It's so, there's so much you could read into it. And at the same time, it's just a, monster movie and you know that oh, I, I love i really like that world as well this kind of little claustrophobic um because that 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 film's nothing new i mean i think it was like the third or second remake or um and it's been done again and um you know like i think the first time it was made was back in the 50s and it had this whole kind of uh mccarthy mccarthy era kind of you know the fear of infiltration by communists that kind of stuff it was playing into that fear and then um oh yeah wonderful you should check out the the uh um invasion of the body snatchers with donald sutherland and funnily enough uh god i've forgotten his name the actor that played spock um leonard nimoy i think it is yeah yeah um it's that particular because that also like the thing has been um remade different directors several times but that particular version you'll really enjoy it because it's it's kind of like the thing in the way it's like wow this is i think it's a bit earlier but it's very effective have very you, effective horror film so have you seen the newest version of the thing the one where they do it the uh, norwegian side uh point of view it just came out a few years ago. No, they, they I also re, they also named it the thing, but it's from the Norwegian uh, base aspect. So like before the first one starts. Oh wow! Okay, I'm definitely going to watch that later. Yeah, cool. I, I have not seen it, so I I can't attest to anything like that. But I heard it's actually, you know, a pretty close. Um, not recreation. That's not the right word to use. But I mean, they play off each other very well. Nice. But yeah, nice. do you, do you like horror films? Oh, I love horror films, but I usually don't yeah. get scared during them. You know, like my wife jumps all the time and everything like that. And I'll just sit there. I'm like, oh, cool. You know, like mm. gory films your... I like. Um, what... Let's see. Yeah. What are your favorites? I'm, I'm, I do I'm, like, to... well, I'm going to come off as really weird because I really like the uh, Rob Zombie films. I don't know if you've ever seen those. Mm. Like the uh, House of a Thousand Corpses, I really enjoyed. Yeah, see, they're like, they're like the one only other person that actually likes that film. But yeah, you know, the he Devil's gets a Rejects. lot of flack. I don't really get un- understand why, but yeah, I like that film. Yeah, it's uh, it is a little weird, and even like um, I'll I'll watch um, uh, what's the Human Centipede, and I'll just like laugh during the movie because it's just yeah. like way over the top it's, funny. It's, it's ridiculous. I mean, how can you take that seriously? How can you take <laughs> offense by that by something so ridiculous? 
I remember my brother and I, we were, you know, this is back in the day, but he was like, hey, you want to watch uh, The Human Centipede? I go, what's that? He goes, <laughs> ah, doctor sews three people <laughs> ass to mouth. And I go, let's put, yeah. it, let's put it on because why not? And if, you, if you didn't know what it was, it would sound like a little kiddies movie like the, <laughs> the human centipede let's go see the human do you know what i mean it has a yeah. kind of there's a slight innocence to it that it makes it more disturbing i think yeah but i mean even i watch stupid movies like that you know i'll, I'll watch the movie rubber have you heard, have you seen the movie rubber no no it's no about i want to see that a tire that uh gains sentience and he starts murdering people right 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 right. <laughs> I mean, yeah just... I, yes yes i still haven't seen that actually i'm, I'm gonna note that down because i want to want to see that yeah but cool. you know films like that I'll watch where it's you know the leprechaun or whatever cheesy yeah. campy horror films. The only one that actually um, I remember watching the leprechaun when I was a little kid, and that one really freaked me out because I was probably seven. You know when the movie came out when I watched it the first time and I freaked out. I couldn't go to sleep. And now watching it again, I start just laughing at every single scene. It is just so funny. But. Hellraiser is like the movie that I can't stand. Like when I was a kid, I couldn't even watch it because he was so freaky. Mm. The, the, uh, the pinhead. Yeah, pinhead. Yeah, he had all yeah. this stuff. And I was like, no, can't do this one. And how do you feel about it now? I haven't gone back to to watch it. I'm too freaked out and I'm too scared. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> just just uh, have have a bit of vodka and um, get you, get your wife to be there with you and, and, and enjoy. I think actually you'll probably be pleasantly surprised because it, it, it's a lot of these, the classics, are, are, well, The Thing is a prime example when it's well made and, and has a good, um, actually, funnily enough, one of the actors in uh, Hellraiser is also in, um, plays Garrick in, um, in Deep Space Nine. Um, I'm sure somebody listening to this will, will say the actor's name, but amazing, amazing actor. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, you should definitely rewatch it. It stands up. It really does stand the te- uh, test of time. Um, yeah, I'll have to do that. I'll definitely have to to watch some of those. But usually from like that point of view, like when I was younger in the 90s, I would watch um, a lot of Schwarzenegger films and a lot of Stallone films. So, oh, yeah, Like course, how yeah. you said you cried at the end of Deep Space Nine, I cry at the end of Terminator 2. <laughs> every single time when he just puts up that thumbs up and I just like start bawling. I just can't, yeah, I just yeah. can't handle it. I don't know. I watched that movie so much as a kid. Uh, my mom. It's so good though. It, you know, like that's what I mean about blockbusters uh, back in, I mean, in, in this, in the true sense of the words, like the, these big budget Hollywood productions that were had, that had well-written characters that had great concepts, uh, amazing direction, uh, um, great talent in, in in the actors. Uh, I think I, you know, that was the peak of Schwarzenegger. I, um, Linda Hamilton was amazing. I mean, I think, I think, um, I loved, especially the way she trans is transformed from this innocent person in the first one mm-hmm. to, to like this really paranoid, hurt, but, but vengeful, angry 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 person and 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 just it's yeah um yeah they're they're great i mean no offense to transformers fans but (laughs) they don't you know big budget stuff today just doesn't you know there's a there's a few gems like every so often but then it's not like back in the day maybe it's rose tinted glasses or whatever the expression is yeah it could be it could be but you're right now it's usually a big cgi you know video game battle at the end of every single movie and i'm like i I don't need to watch that like there's something about the first terminator film when it's just this claymation robot coming at you at the end and she's running through the factory and you just have like this uneasy sense the entire time because you could feel that she you know the T-800 can capture at any moment, you know, and then you're, yeah. Oh yeah. man, it's so good. Yeah. They don't make movies like that anymore. It's, no, it's very certainly irritating. Not. <laughs> certainly not. Certainly not. What, so what, uh, growing up aside from the films, what kind of, uh, things did you play? Cause I know you're a big PC gamer now. Yeah. I, I, um, I went through a phase of trying to get with all the new stuff and I just found it way too stressful. And, um, I I love my strategy games. Uh, I love my historical 
based strategy games you know stuff like age of empires and civilization um total war uh are you a company big, are you a big sorry, history buff a bit, sorry what was that uh, sorry are you a big history buff like in real life yeah i am yeah 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 i i do like i do like the the strategy games because i get to i know what how history goes so being able to kind of do it your way is always like a fun thing to do, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, uh, so I I love that especially, but I have sci-fi games, you know, all the classics, like everything from doom to, 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 um, super Mario to, um, what's the last thing I was playing? I was playing unit 13, which is a really nice little shooter, uh, first person shooter on the PS Vita, which seems to be completely forgotten about. And, um, once again, uh, well, I think you're, so, you and I are the only ones to have a PlayStation Vita <laughs> on hand. <laughs> I think we're the only two. Right. Yeah, yeah I love a, It's a great little handheld, you know? Yeah, even the um, the Killzone game, the first-person shooter. Oh, yeah, for yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have Killzone. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so good. I don't know why yeah. people don't like it. It's such yeah. a cool little system. It has two joysticks. It has a touchpad in the back. It could run games very well. I don't know why it didn't I know. perform the way that they were expecting. I think, you know what I, I think know. it is? I think it's that memory card, the proprietary Sony memory card. Do you know mm. what I'm talking about? Yeah. Mm. I, I also, the timing of it. Yeah, uh, maybe. Because, like, it came, it, it came out just as phones were getting better and, you know, people playing games on their phones now. And, well, at least I think that's what Sony said. But because I, I was looking if they were going to bring out something new. Because I was looking at the Switch, I was I was thinking, oh man, I might buy the Switch. And then I looked at all the games, and I'm just like, ah, oh, can't. No, I'm, I've I've I'd rather find some old PC games for my PC. Yeah, you know, that's I have a Switch, and I do play Civ Six on there. Uh, nice. So nice. I love the Civilization games. Uh, I'm not oh. very good at them. I'll give you that. Right. But like, just the building up a nation from you know settler to everything else yeah. i usually play as uh australia because they i play very defensive and right. so like um they have a, a buff where if you get um declare if someone declares war on you you gain production twice as fast and so i like doing that where i'll just have you know i'll nice. just stand off and i'll play very slow and then someone will obviously declare war on me and then all of a sudden my production ramps up i'm like okay now here's everything yeah 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 nice 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 who's your number one i, player I didn't know use? they had it on switch that's that's cool that's yeah. cool who's uh who's your number one player to or uh emperor to play as um i, I well i i usually play as uh either uh rome ancient rome caesar i guess mm-hmm. um or Depends which version of Civilization, but the last one I played, I think it had Churchill as the Brits. Um, okay. So yeah, I, because I'm I'm British Italian, so it's it's um, so it's very fitting. You have yeah. to you have to represent. <laughs> exactly. See, I, exactly. I don't like playing as uh, well. They've changed it now, but it used to be uh, Alexander the Great was the Greeks. And, uh, of course, because you're Greek. Yeah, right, and right. so like I would play as him, but I didn't really like his strategy all that much. I was like, eh, I'll be Lincoln. I'll be America. You know, like, right. they're bombers. Yeah. You know, I don't like the early game. I, I thought you were Greek because your name, because uh, I used to live in Astoria in Queens, which is a very Greek yeah. and neighborhood. Uh, do you have family there at all? Uh, no, most of my family is uh, in this area, um, Chicagoland area, and I have some in Montreal. And then right. the rest of them are in Greece, right? Do you, do you go back often? Um, enough, enough. I haven't been for a few years, but um, yeah. I, I, when I growing up, I used to go like every other year. We would go out there and spend a month or two months out there. Uh, oh, yeah, so my nice. parents are from there, so I'm first generation. Um, so nice. you know, I don't speak fluent Greek or anything like that, but I can get around. You know, I like to sp- say speak at like a sixth grade level. You know, which is right, not right, terrible, right, right. but like to have an intelligent conversation with someone might not be my uh, forte. Right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Oh, Greece is lovely. The islands, especially. Oh, it's beautiful. Uh, yeah. When was the last time you were out there? Uh, oh, what? Uh, uh, donkeys years ago. But uh, I went to um, Santorini. I went to Athens. I went to Mykonos. 
all the party uh, places. I like it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I like it. Mykonos is all about the clubbing over there. Yeah, I know. And they have these crazy volcanic beaches, which are which mm-hmm. are yeah. interesting. That's uh, yeah. like where my parents are from. They're called uh, the island's called Hios. It's right off Hios. the coast of Turkey, and. Uh, right. And they have very unique beaches where some will have like the black volcanic rock black. and then there'll right, be that's it. Yeah. sand beaches and then there'll be like, you know, other pebble beaches, yada, yada, yada. They have all sorts of things. And I like the island a lot because it's like the least touristy of all the islands. So mm-hmm. you're not paying, you know, $8 for a coffee. You know, you're paying $2, what it would cost any other person. So that's what yeah. I'm like. When I go back to Greece, I need to go back there because I've been to... um Last time I went, I went to Thessaloniki, which is like the second largest city in Greece. Right. Um, right. It's a little bit further up north. Um, and then we went to the west coast where my wife's dad's from. Um, and uh, he lives up in the mountains. So we get to see like Mount Olympus and stuff. We had to actually, we had lunch at the base of Mount Olympus, which was pretty cool. Wow. That's yeah. so cool. So I do, yeah. next time I do want to go, I actually want to go explore a little bit, maybe do some hiking. I think I, I really want to see everything that Greece has to offer. Um, but yeah, I definitely want to go back to the island and hang out there because it's so fun. You should. Have you have you ever heard of a book called Mythos? No. You you should check it out. It's um do you know who Stephen Fry is? No, I do I I have to admit I don't read all that much. Oh no he, well actually I mean he's a he's an author, but he's also an actor and a comedian, British actor and comedian. Okay. And he wrote this wonderful book called Mythos. Um, it's so good that I, after reading it, I bought the audio book just so I could uh, listen to him reading it hmm. and just get familiar because it's all about the Greek mythology, the the the, um, the origin of all the gods and their stories, and um, it's it, fascinating. And I had no idea how many words the etymology of words that I use every day are just uh, come from, in fact, you know, funny, if we look at the word horology, you know, the study of time, mm-hmm. uh, if you trace it back first, if, as, as Brits, we, we got it from the Latin, but the Latin got it from the Greeks, mm-hmm. you know, horos, horology. And then, right. you know, so like it's, uh, it's utterly fascinating. And I think you'd, it's, it's not very, what I like about Stephen is that I mean he's a he's a quite a highbrow intellectual, highly educated um, Cambridge, um, um, attended Cambridge and and um, you know he's very respected for for his literature. But um, he it's not pretentious. It's not like difficult to understand. It's just very like he find he's he's very funny and, he, and it's very accessible. Um, so I highly recommend Mythos because um, I, I, as as for you, you'd feel immense pride. Hmm. Um, yeah, I, you know, I, you know, I, I, find, I was like proud of it, and I'm not even Greek, so you know. <laughs> um, I so, definitely have to give that a read for sure. At least listen to the audio book. Um, yeah, yeah, get the audio book. Just I, I like I like just to put it on, just in the background, just you know, a, a chapter every so often because you know, chapter so and so, such and such will be you know, the origin of a certain God, uh, of a certain thing, you know, a certain governance of like, I don't know, um, uh, it might be um, Apollo or something. Oh, do you know what I mean? And then it will yeah. just tell you the story of Apollo. And it's just... You know, I was thinking I was thinking to myself too the other day, and because now I'm on this big watch kick, and uh, right. I have to, you know, <laughs> so I was like, oh, let's see what kind of micro brands are from Greece, you know? Right. And I would walk, Nothing. Not one watch company, nothing. Really? And I was just like, R- really nothing? And then I was just like, there's so many like myths and and uh, even yeah. Alexander the Great and all these other things are from that region and there's no watch designs about it, like anything of that. And so I was like, maybe I should design something because I'm, I'm kind of yeah. artistic, right? <laughs> and then I'm just like, oh shit, that takes a lot more work than I thought. Maybe oh, I can't. God, yes. <laughs> but, yeah. But yeah, I mean, there's definitely a gap there. Um, but well, you know what's funny is like half of these watch brands, they like Omega, Omega, you know, right, it's a, exactly, a, a yeah. Greek. Uh, the the hippocampus on the the back of the Seamaster that we were talking about earlier on every single 
Seamaster that's ever been in a Bond movie, unless it has an exhibition case back, you know, the seafood case back. The hippocampus, this mythical sea creature that's kind of part horse, part fish, Greek mythology. Mm -hmm. And then then there's a few brands like, a few micro brands like uh, Laurier, they have their Neptune, they have their Gemini, they have their, you know, so like, the, even though there might not be a Greek, uh, a directly a Greek brand, there's the, 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 the culture permeates so deeply into everything. And I think that's what the book really made me realize. It just made me realize, Jesus, like everything, it all goes back to this, it all goes back to that, you know? Have you seen the movie, uh, uh, My Big Fat Greek Wedding? No, I, I I'm ashamed to say I haven't. Sorry. <laughs> the, the that's fine, but the dad is always he's very proud to be Greek, and he's yeah. just like every word comes from Greek. I tell you, give me a <laughs> word, and I tell you how it goes back to Greek. You know, and so, <laughs> it just cracks me up because I'm like, you remind, he, you remind me of Mr. Panos. Have you ever? Have you <laughs> oh, seen Mr. Panos, Panos, he's oh my god, that's a YouTuber <laughs> that I miss right now. Mr. Panos yeah. is hilarious. He's a comedian though. Yeah, what happened to him? Because I haven't, I haven't watched him for ages. Yeah, he might have uh, just fell off. You know, it's just the creative got to him. Maybe I don't know, but he, I know he does a lot of stand-up comedy. Right, um, right, right. But yeah, oh, Mr. God. Banos was yeah. so <laughs> funny. Oh my god, when I saw him, that that's early YouTube right there. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. Oh my god, now nah, I miss this. Yeah. Now nah, I want to go back to early YouTube days when it was all about making viral videos. Yeah. Right yeah oh my god but um yeah uh back to the video games now i'm I'm thinking about my everything going on here um you know what game they just came out with and when you said command and conquer um Mm. oh yeah uh, so have you so how big of a command and conquer fan are you first of all well um let's just say i got in trouble (laughs) at school because when it came the first one came out um, yeah, it caused problems. Like I would skive off just to play it. Um, I, I love the early ones. Why, why, what has, so, something, has a so new one come out? There's a, there's a company out there. It's called limited run games. I don't know if you've ever heard mm-hmm. of them. No, they specialize in like, um, releasing physical media for digital games. Mm-hmm. And so they have made this collector's edition of like, uh, Tiberian sun and red alert oh. and all this stuff. And they have like all these, I showed my buddy cause that's where me and my friend Dustin, we met each other in like eighth grade and mm-hmm. he's Macedonian and I'm Greek. And so like, we're like, Oh, let's have a team. And so we played command and conquer and we would always like team up and like beat everybody else, whatever. Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. uh, they have all these like, um, Oh, what do they call them? The GDI or I forget yeah. what, the, what all those groups are, but no, they have all, like, all these pins and they have these art books and they have these uh, uh, soundtracks and all this stuff. And I was like, oh my God, I have to tell TGV about this one yeah. because <laughs> I, love I, I love it. flipped yeah. shit when I, was, when I saw that. I was like, this is amazing. I need to get this yeah. now. But this, I think it's like 150 bucks. But I was like, wow. oh man. But that wow. game right there, that was like one of my most fun gaming memories growing up i just love doing that i suck at strategy games too that's like the the bad part about is like starcraft and all that i have no clue i am just very bad Mm. that's funny because like i'm the other way around Uh, what's your preferred genre uh right now i i play a lot of rpgs a lot of right. RPGs because it's very slow paced and I can take the story how I, I'd like to go. You know, I'd like to go slow and I like to solve things diplomatically. Um, if you'd like, I don't know, if, are you into RPGs at all? No. Um, like a Skyrim uh, or something? No, I, I, I kind of missed, I, I missed that, that, you know, that era. I got mm. out of games when that was kind of popping off, so to speak. Yeah, well, there's a game out there. It's called, if you, I know you're um, into uh, history and everything, so let me pull mm. it up, make, make sure I uh, say this correctly. It's called Kingdom Come. Mm-hmm. It's um, an RPG that puts you in the shoes of a blacksmith's son, okay, in okay. the Roman Empire era. Oh, wow. Um, okay. It's based in real world history, um, so there's like no magic or anything like that. Uh, but basically you don't know how to do anything. You don't know how to read. You don't know how to swing a sword, use a bow, nothing. 
because you're mm. just the son of a, this poor blacksmith. Um, right. And then you get into you know, all, involved in all these situations, and uh, yeah, it follows the the storyline of the Holy Roman Empire. So it's actually a very interesting uh, video game that I have to go back and play. But if you're into, is this recent? Uh, this came out in 2018, I believe. And, and what platform is this on? Um, you can get it on PC or Xbox or PlayStation anything like that nice. yeah so nice. it's definitely something that i would highly recommend and you probably get it for like 20 bucks now but um cool. that's the type of games i like to play is something that's more rpg focused that my decisions matter that i can talk through situations um, yeah something like that i yeah you, I, it definitely sounds like you're gonna enjoy tng <laughs> you know there we go and i've now and I have I've got to watch a, it. Yeah, I've got to check out these uh, role-playing games. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let me think here. I guess in closing, if mm-hmm. is there something, aside from the next generation, if I had to get TGV's, uh, I guess, top three films to watch, what would it be? Oh. <laughs> I guess what would it be? Ah, okay. Um, I can't do it in descending order or, or, or ascending order because I think, I, I don't think there's one film to rule them all. So to, you know, mm-hmm. like, like, like Lord of the Rings or whatever, but, um, okay. Ran would be one of them. The, the, uh, Kira Kurosawa classic, um, it's basically King Lear, but in feudal samurai Japan. And it's just, it's a masterpiece of filmmaking. It's beautiful to look at. Um, it's, it's just, it's classic stuff, you know, like, um, warring brothers, um, a dying King, uh, you know, huge battle scenes. It's just, it's beautiful, you know? Um, okay. I got, then that, I was, I got, sorry, that, one, what? I got that one marked down. Nice, nice, nice. Um, then I would say, I'm going to have to have something Italian. I would probably say The Bicycle Thief or Ladri di Bicicletta, if you, if you, in Italy, anybody in Italy watching. Um, this was very, quite soon after the war, um, black and white film about a, I, I can't remember what his job was, but he did, he relied on his bike. It was a very impoverished Rome. That was, um, you know, the country was still reeling after the war. Uh, um, and he gets his bike stolen and he, and he goes looking for his bike. Uh, it sounds quite boring, but it's not, it's, it's a really heartfelt story, uh, of poverty and kind of the Italian, the real Italian way of life. Um, and it's important because it was, it's a, it's a landmark film in the neorealist movement, which was this kind of new way of filmmaking, um, where the Italians would use real people, real neighborhoods, nothing was glamorized. It was as gritty and raw as it could be. And, um, back then everything was either very Hollywood and big productions and very, very kind of, uh, contrived. And this was the polar opposite. It was just about poor people and their little struggles. Um, but it's also about a father and son relationship because as they're searching for this bike, they, he kind of, kind of not so much rediscovers his love for his son, but there's, there's this kind of, I, I don't, there's a lot of things you can read into it. It's a commentary on, on post-war Italy. So definitely that, um, the bicycle thief, thief, sorry. Uh, and uh, it's uh, Victoria De Sica as well. So very, very important um, Italian film director. Um, third choice. Um, I, I want to say, I want to I have something American in there. Um, hmm. No pressure. You know, <laughs> no pressure whatsoever. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to go with, um, I'm going to go with Hannibal. Um the sequel to uh well actually it's not really a sequel because it's it's the third film to have hannibal lecter um 
but it's look it's not the best ridley scott film it's not the best film in the world but it's important to me because i saw it at the cinema and i was i was just coming out of art school in england and my father uh he he wanted me to go back to Italy and uh, he wanted me to go to Rome, which is where my my family is, and um, and and I wanted I, I suggested I went to the school in Florence because I saw the film. It's set in Florence, and um, it's a, it's a beautiful film. I think it's a beautiful film. It's I, I love the book. Uh, I love Thomas Harris. I, I, I always enjoyed Silence of the Lambs. It's it's no way better than Silence of the Lambs, but it, it it's special to me because it made me fall in love with Florence. And then I went to live there. I studied there for two years. I met my wife there. Had I not gone, I wouldn't have met my wife. And we've been together ever since because she's from New York and NYU where she was studying. They have a, a school there, um, part of their school there. So it was, it was integral to kind of reawakening my love for Italy and, and its history and uh, especially the Renaissance Florence and also it kind of um, it, uh, it reminds me of living there. I mean, there's so many shots in in the street I lived in, so you know it's, it just takes me back. And I, I, I say again, it's not the best film. There are some wonderful performances. Gary Oldman plays um, Mason Verger, this 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 disabled um, billionaire kind of per- pervert that that Hannibal Lecter. Um, torments and it's a you know how like Gary Oldman I'm not sure if you're familiar with his work but he's always like he, every film is in he transforms completely you know yeah, like, yeah yeah you know one one minute he's Churchill next minute he's a he's a a pimp with dreadlocks and <laughs> true romance you know yeah and then then he's like this absolutely revolting creature that is just pure evil even more evil than Hannibal Lecter you know Oh, just wow. disgusting, that's, you know. So that's like, not easy to do. Yeah, no, exactly. And and such a repulse. It's amazing. I mean, he's an amazing actor. I've I've nothing but admiration. But then, uh, you know, of course, you got Anthony Hopkins, who's who I is one of my favorite actors. Um, and it's difficult because there's a million films. You know, I love Danish cinema. I love um, French, um, British cinema. Obviously, it's um, yeah, it's. I, I could make a top one hundred, and it still wouldn't be enough. <laughs> You know, so well, well, I'll have to check that out on the Urban Gentry. I'll have to <laughs> see your top yeah. 100 films of all time. <laughs> I need to, make, yeah, I need to make that video. It'll be about three hours long, but we'll we'll do it. That's you know? what you need to do. You need to make a video game episode on the Urban Gentry and just have it strictly old school oh. video games <laughs> and say this is what a real gentleman oh. plays. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And do that. I'm not sure about that, but yeah, I could try. Yeah, <laughs> no problem. Yeah. But um, well, TGV, thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. Really had a fun time talking with you about everything from watches to to uh, movies. So thanks for coming on. Oh, it's a pleasure, man. Thank you so much. I'm I'm very honored. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right, guys. Uh, if you want to check out the Urban Gentry, you can find them on YouTube and I believe Instagram as well at the Urban Gentry. Yes, that's right. Absolutely. And if you want to pick up your next watch, go to watchbox.com. And, uh, nice. And yes. We'll please. put that plug in there. Not a sponsor. Not a sponsor. I have yet to buy <laughs> something from them. But it, the website looks very cool. So thanks for coming on. And thanks for listening. You've been listening to Power Gauntlet. Be sure to follow us on social media and visit frozengorillas.com for all of your Power Gauntlet and Blue Light special merch.